Marcus, my God, what a movie. What what an experience. It was authentic. It was amazing. It was inspiring. And you really held your own in this movie. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. It was a labor of love. When you approach these kinds of, of scenes, I kind of try to relate a lot of things to to my real life and 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 real traumas that we've all been through um, and kind of pull from those to, to bring out the emotion. But the further I got into shooting, I started to feel Daniel's pain and Daniel's yeah. suffering. Um, and it was just, I mean, it was hard to hold it together even during scenes and it's like, all right, Marcus, you're supposed to be, and I'm like over here crying and I'm supposed to be upset and like having this whole like big blowout. It's like, I can't stop crying. I don't know why I'm just so sad. Um, it was, it was a hard shoot for sure. And, and just trying to, you know, decompress from that every day, getting home, um, Definitely was a take your work home with you type of situation. Well, I could relate with it because I had I had a brother that was challenged. Your patience was tested. You didn't have the answers, yeah. but through patience, you were able to have a better understanding of what his potential was growing into. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I I think that was um, one of the, the the bigger struggles for Daniel was the fact that obviously his his um, he lost his parents. He lost his form of, of, of support, um, specifically his mom. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's just thrust with the task of, of taking care of his, his younger brother, which is already a, a crazy huge task for, for an 18 year old with, with no family to support him or, or, or back him. Um, and on top of that, Eli is now mute from the situation. Um, and you just add that layer on and it, it, it Daniel was like in a, in a pressure cooker trying to, to work and balance school and take care of his brother. Um, and at the same time, you know, he wanted to, to not only take care of his brother, but, you know, teach him about the world and, and raise him. And I think that's where the, the list came from. Um, and it just was, it was sort of an act of desperation to, to try to get through to Eli and, and, and make him understand. Um, and then obviously you've got Lonnie, Lonnie Chavis. He, that dude is a, a genius um, and him playing Eli. I, I mean, each day on set, I was just, I, I was like, dang, I just want to take care of you. I want everything to be okay, man. Like this, it was, it was, it was a difficult challenge. Um, and I think, you know, just being surrounded by amazing actors and actresses um, kind of helped to, to, to bring Daniel to life and bring their characters to life. It was just like a, a beautiful sounding board. You know, you're going to open up, open up a lot of people's eyes with this movie in the way that you have proven to the world through this movie, How I Learned to Fly, that just because you don't have a roof over your head doesn't mean that you're a person of homelessness. You made mm -hmm. that car your home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. And I, I, I think um, I'm from Los Angeles, um, and we have a, uh, a big issue with yeah. the with the homeless crisis that's that's going on currently i mean it's going on a, around the world and across the country of course um but i think uh, we're definitely a, a a hot spot when it comes to conversation around it and i feel like people treat homeless people um not like people and they treat them as like a problem to solve um and i don't know it it it, it, it kind of how I learned to fly and, and Daniel and Eli's relationship, I hope can help some people um, who, who dehumanize the issue to, to really see some, some life in it and, and, and understand that these people need homes and they need places to go. They're not a problem to be solved and cleaned off the streets. Um, so yeah. And, and I also, I, I completely agree with what you said. I, I feel like one of the most important messages throughout the, the the film that daniel tries to relate to to eli is like just because we don't have our parents or we don't have a house doesn't mean that we don't that that we're that we're homeless um we're still rich at heart and we're rich because we have each other and you know a lot of people don't even have that they have no one to turn to yeah um and they kind of have each other to lean on which i thought was really beautiful and they have their their neighbors and um, they have uh, Michelle at, at, at the laundromat. It's oh there, there are, are, are small building blocks, and, and it just takes one person. 
<laughs> oh my God, you're so right about. I mean, God, I mean, just just you saying that, I I just I fell in love with her so quickly because I knew she was gonna mm-hmm. she she was gonna have a major part in this entire story, and the way that she embraced both of you, their, her storyline. I mean, it's it's like oh my God, and it just proves that there is a community in places where we think there isn't one. Exactly, exactly, and I think we were both both Eli and Daniel were trepidatious, and um, she really just opened her her doors and her heart to us, and. You know, showed us a good time, of course, and um, yeah, it just takes. I think it, it takes small moments of kindness like that, and, and reaching out to people that you know are struggling um, to make a world of a difference. Oh my God! And it started with Eli discovering the dog and and locating who the owner was, and and that just yeah. opened up a whole new platform, is what it did. Yeah, it definitely that 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 part was a bit more of a comedic moment and I, I, I kind of loved it. It was one of my, my favorite parts to the film. Um, but yeah, it just, it goes to show, you know, Daniel was the provider and he was trying to take care of Eli, but sometimes, you know, Eli was also leading him to gold. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, they're both kids. So um, yeah, it was a, it was a, a beautiful symbiotic relationship. Speaking of symbols, uh, there, there is some symbolism in it, especially when it comes to when you learn how to fly. My heart was, mm-hmm. is that, that I, I told my wife, I said, this is what it's like when you meditate. I feel like I'm flying. Did, was that mm-hmm. what you felt in, in that moment? That it was, just, it was just a form of meditation that we able, enabled you to just kind of let go? Um, what, I, what I felt mostly was the, the apple box in my back as we were trying to film <laughs> no i'm completely joking the the um but no you hit it hit it on the nose i think the the flying symbolism is kind of like releasing your earthly shackles mm-hmm. um i kind of like like to think about it like you know your mind is kind of traveling in a uh a, a, a shell your mind is like really who you are and it's controlling this mech suit that uh, that is your body and so when you're dreaming and you're you're releasing yourself from from all of the troubles and problems that you have in, in in the world and the things that you're facing, it's really like you're flying. You can go anywhere. You can do anything. Anything is possible. Uh, and I think that's what was so important about that. Those portions. Um, it's important to dream. Is kind of yeah. what what I'm trying to get at. Oh my God! And then even when you laid down in that street, first of all, I was I was afraid that a car was going to come by, and that's I was like, oh my God, what what tragic could could happen right now? But but the oh, way no. that, you know, and looking up at those stars and stuff, a lot of people wish we had the time to just lay in the middle of the street and look at the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It one hundred percent. It's um, it was cathartic and and therapeutic, and um, I think Daniel healed a lot from those moments alone and those quiet moments and like you said it was a lot like meditation Mm -hmm. there's a scene in this movie that uh really opened up my heart and and i hope that people you know catch the positive in it it's when you're in the parking lot and the police officer drives up and of course you know we all we've all seen the headlines we thought oh my god this is it and and then but he he brought peace to the moment and i thought that was such a special scene me too and our um uh i was honestly terrified when the when the lights hit which is is kind of crazy like i knew it was a scene and everything but you know i, I especially people in the black community it's mm-hmm. like it, that's not a good sign when you see the i mean a lot of people obviously get scared nowadays with the police but um i thought that was a beautiful moment and it kind of um yeah i think i i've talked about it a couple times but one of the beautiful things about how i learned to fly is um it kind of illustrates that it takes a village and it takes multiple people stepping up and kind of lending a hand um, to create uh, who Daniel and Eli become. And that's one of those important forming mom- formative moments. Whose idea was it to put the messages on the ceiling? Because I'm a daily writer and I keep little affirmation journals and things like that. So I go to those those quotes. But I mean, to have it on the ceiling was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, our director, Simon. Um, he had such a vision. Um, for the the film and and what he wanted to happen and i think it's just a, a beautiful i think it's just it's so on the nose of what would happen because if you look at it daniel's this 18 year old kid he's trying to figure out how to raise his younger brother he has no idea what to do and he's like okay what is the most obvious thing i can do to get this kid who is is, is also mute and and doesn't want to listen to me and is, is suffering and dealing with so much of his own pain 
what is the best thing I can do to get him to follow these rules and, and, and grow up and, and, and learn? And I think just the simplicity of, you know, writing every single rule on the wall. So every day he wakes up and opens his eyes, he just sees what, how he should be living or, or, or what he needs to do. Um, yeah, it's like a little Ten Commandments moment. It's pretty, pretty cool. I, I, I loved that. The one that was missing from the ceiling was the one where, where Daniel, you know, he never gave up on an education. Never. He kept never. trying. Yeah. I thought that was beautiful. And that's, I mean, it's hard for, for a, a, a lot of people um, to, to pursue education, especially in a situation like that. And um, yeah, it's just, I think it illustrated the, the importance of education. Um, a lot of people aren't even, Daniel is uh, a fictional character. You know what I mean? A lot of people aren't able to continue and, and do their schoolwork without a home and being able to do that in your car. Um, definitely hope it was inspirational, but it's definitely not the standard. Um, but I, I think it was, it's, it's something important. And it kind of, you know, it, it is one of the reasons that they're um, hopefully triumphant in the end. Yeah. One of the things that this movie teaches, and, and I've always I've said that so many times with different lectures that I've done, is that if something were to ever happen to this nation and we're forced to go into homelessness, it's movies like this that's going to teach those of us that have four walls on how to survive out there in the real world. And I think that this is such an, a powerful tool for those people who may be challenged with it right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope it gives hope to a lot of people was I think one of the the big goals that that Simon and the rest of us had for this film um because while it shows such dire situations that these characters are in um it kind of also shows the light of humanity and what happens when we help each other out um and also it, it teaches you to kind of value what you have Eli and Daniel have nothing but each other um but that's kind of just everything they need um I think that's beautiful and kind of the way the world should work. Cedric the Entertainer, real, I mean, he leaned in on those two brothers. He knew, he knew, yeah. and and then and then the way that yeah. Eli was able to help him with that car, all of a sudden, you talk about yeah. returning a favor to somebody. Yeah, <laughs> that was a huge, huge return. It's so funny, that car, too, was like, I think that car was loaned to us by one of Simon's friends. Really? <laughs> um, and it had the most miles I've ever seen on a car that was like still operating. I think it had like over, I think it was like around unironically 400,000 miles, maybe more. Um, and that thing was would break down every other street. So the <laughs> fact that Eli fixed it was <laughs> very impressive. Um, but yeah, Cedric and, and his character I, I, like I said, I feel like he was one of the cornerstones of the film, even if his uh, his role was 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 pretty short, but it, he brings so much humanity um, and so much positivity. And I feel like he acts as a, a, um, a role model for Eli. Um, and like I said, it's just it takes a couple individuals, one individual reaching out to change somebody's life. Um, and that's what his character did and that's what he did he he really uh, it, his character is just so heartwarming i i don't i loved it yeah going back to the house for daniel that had to have been a tough thing to do because i mean so many people when they lose something as special as a house or a home i should say but he goes back to it yeah. and, and i felt that moment it was you didn't have to say anything we just felt the moment yeah yeah um man it was crushing i bet for sure um and I think that 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 shared moment, that that shared understanding, because I don't even know if Eli completely understood what was happening. Mm -hmm. But, you know, especially Daniel, who's just trying and struggling and, and working so hard to maintain that life that they had um, and provide the best that he could for for Eli. It was a, a crushing blow. And I think Eli can sense that. And he he kind of. Um, tries to be there to, to allow Daniel to lean into him for support for once um, because I think Daniel does a lot of lifting him up yeah. um, and he's like okay this is a moment when my brother needs me and yeah it's just crushing absolutely crushing 
Oh, and you, you talk about where, you know, because you, you said that, that uh, Eli maybe didn't know everything that was going on, but when you came out with the truth, and I'm not going to spoil the movie here, there's an area of this movie mm-hmm. where truth comes out and the brothers split, and it's like, oh, oh, I mean, yeah. th- that scene was, was earth shattering. Yeah, it was 100%. It was earth shattering for us to do, too, because me and Lonnie had been working together for like a month and a half at that point, and to have to have that so, so much... Uh, anguish and pain between us i'd really begin to to see him as my little brother um it was hard it was difficult and um i couldn't imagine what daniel was going through um yeah it's 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 rough one creative person to another creative person the texture of the film the way that i mean it's got its own little vibration about it and and i love the way that that it looks on the screen and the way that it feels i mean it's it's got it's got its own identity it truly does, uh, and that's all thanks to Simon. Uh, Simon's story, he, uh, his, his mind, the way that it works for, for visuals, he was like, we had these, the, the flying sequences and everything, everyone was like, okay, Simon, like, how are you gonna do this on this budget? And it <laughs> came out wonderful. It, it looks, I mean, it looks like I'm like literally floating through yeah. through through time and space and everything. Um, he, his vision is, is insane and I, I I as well agree. I like I love the color grading. I love the way it kind of uh, desaturates the world, but also offers so much texture. Um, it, it really makes it feel dirty and, and gritty, and uh, I don't know. You can feel the situation that these boys are in, and it just feels kind of real. Um, I love the way that it turned out visually. What did it feel like to be the lead actor? I mean, I realize everybody else was on the set, but th- this this was your movie, dude. Yeah, um, it felt great. It felt great. This was also my first time getting to to executive produce. Um, so there was a lot of stuff and a lot of firsts happening at the, the same time. It felt really, really good um, to kind of get into the nuts and bolts of this character. I feel like I had a lot of um, a lot of time and a lot of moments to um, kind of explore who Daniel was and what he wanted um, from life. And that was... I was a lot of fun. I, I, I loved it. And of course, you know, the supporting cast, they, they helped to, to bring it to life as well. Yeah. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Marcus. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, I appreciate it. I had a great time. Well, you great, be, great time. You'd be brilliant today, okay? All right. You as well. Thank you.